There hasn't been much sword play in the South since the Yankees left. Few Southern women ever fought their way onto an Olympic fencing team. <laughs> Until now. Atlanta's own Nee Lee struggled for 12 years. It's hot. Training with no sponsor, hey! little money, we need them. one thought. I want to be the maiden in shining armor. <laughs> As a child, she seldom played sports. She fled war. Her family escaped the fall of Saigon in 1975. Nee Lee was 11. The biggest influence in my life is my mother. She was determined to raise all nine kids, put them through college. I just wish all of my children be a doctor. But Nee Lee turned down a medical scholarship to take up fencing. At first, she practiced in backyards and driveways. Her parents thought all of this was just a hobby. She was too old to start, already 19, and much shorter than the other fencers. She also had to help her mother run the family restaurant in Atlanta. Ça va? Oui, ça va, merci. Nee Lee sold computers internationally to pay her way to bouts. Okay, thank you, Year after year. Until one day, America's Vietnamese community had its champion. You're my first sponsor. Now she is a celebrity. It's my dream comes true, and I'm very excited. Yeah. So is her mother, who 12 years ago vowed never to watch her compete unless she made the Olympics. She probably knew I could do it all along, but she probably never wanted to admit it. <laughs> because the two are so alike. Yeah, nobody can tell me what to do, and so like her, and now nobody can tell her what to do. Her mother knew what holds Neely back also drives her on. <laughs> She understands now why her mom issued that challenge. It's the two wills going at each other, and the stronger will wins. <laughs> but the two wills are better for having fenced about. Tomorrow, when Neely fences in the Olympics, there's a seat for her mom. She'll be there. <laughs> this one's for you, Mom. Bob Dotson, NBC News, Atlanta.